Take all the glory in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Sit down, God justly in God's presence. Glory to Jesus. It's always a joy to be here. Like I said last, the last time I came, the hospitality in this place. <laughs> Can we celebrate the people in the hospitality unit? <laughs> No, no other people, no other place, nowhere else is it done like it is done here. Give the Lord a big hand. <laughs> Mothers indeed, glory to God. Praise God. So we have two sessions tonight. The first session will be very brief. I'll just do an introduction of what we're about to go into. And then we come back for a more explosive session. Glory to God. So I'll be teaching for just one hour, just to set foundations as we prepare our hearts for what will happen later tonight. Glory to God. Our theme for this convention is seizing the moment. Winning the moment is good, but I'm a bit more aggressive. The violent take at it by force. <laughs> Glory to God. But of course, it's the same thing, not to worry. So there are a few things I'll be touching. I'll take time to define what a spiritual moment is. And then I'll take out time to show you the packages that are allocated to moments of the spirit. And then I'll show you also the protocol for winning, seizing, or hijacking a spiritual moment. Because one thing you will discover is that spiritual things are not given, they are taken. If you wait, it will pass by. And so the basis of my teaching tonight is to show you how to lay hold on what is yours. Because there are many who waited and it never happened. There was a man who waited for 38 years and he never accessed it. The word is to katalambano, take it by force. If you don't know how to take moments, many moments will pass you by. But it's my prayer that in this meeting, every moment allocated for your destiny, you will seize it by force. In the name of Jesus. And so when you are dealing with spiritual moments, you are talking about spiritual timings. And the subject of time is majorly divided into two there's what we call the chronological time or the sequential time and so in theology we call it chronos time and there's also what we call the kairos time or what you call the moment of the spirit they are different things chronological time or sequential time is simply the array of activities that God allows us to run through as a routine either daily weekly monthly or yearly it is an ordinary sequential occurrence of events according to arrangement by God and that timing is available to everyone the purpose of chronological time is to bring order to your life so there is a time to sleep there is a time to wake up. There is a time to do the things you need to do. So it helps you establish order in your life. You can, by reason of wisdom, equip yourself in such a way that you maximize that time. But you see, matters of destiny are not allocated to chronological timing. That's why a man or a woman can be 40 years old and make no impact among men. And somebody else can just be 20 and it's already making global impact. So chronology is good because it brings order into your life, but matters of destiny operate at a time zone superior to chronology. And that is why you talk about moments. And moments are also called kairos times. A kairos time is actually an opportune time because the way God works is, you know, God is light. The Bible said in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 16, it said, God is light. 
and that light is unapproachable. And there are some of you here who are probably professors of science. You have done science at one level or the other. You know that although you are seeing light as a stream, but light is actually given out in packets. So the light ray you see is actually packets. We call it quanta. In singular form, it's called quantum. It's packets. Light moves in packets. And because God is light, that is how God distributes his resources to his children. They come in packets. If God releases the full dose of what he has for you, it will destroy you. You can't receive it. So what God does is that he distributes the resources that he has for you in packets. And these packets get to you in different seasons. So the seasons that capture the blessings of God for you are the things that we call moments. So there are people who have moments show up in their lives in cycles of weeks, in cycles of months, in cycles of years, and it continues like that. Because the blessedness and the blessings of God, you can't trap all of it at the same time. God is, you can't quantify God. His essence, he's too massive. If I had time to teach you about God, you will see that there are three major things about God. There's the essential attribute of God, there is the moral attribute of God, and there is also the office, the offices that God occupies. For example, God is omnipotent. Now, imagine if the one who is all-powerful tries to approach your realm. The power will crush you even before he gets to you. Just like if you want to pick an ant, you have to be very careful to touch it because if you are not careful, you will squeeze it. Now, that is your size compared to an ant. Imagine if an elephant wants to pick an ant. It will literally be impossible because of the difference in size. Now, when God wants to reach your realm, he has to be very de delicate to transfer his resources to your realm because of the magnitude in difference. So what God does is that he distributes what he wants to give you into packets, into units. And those units come to you at specific timing. And so those opportune times when divine things happen in your space is what we call Kairos moment. And so Kairos moments are not for routine. Kairos moments are opportunities that define your destiny. And so when you see two believers, the difference between them is not their age. When you meet two believers, the difference between them is the degree to which they maximize Kairos moments. That's why you have to master how to win moments of the spirit because they come with messages of empowerment for shaping your destiny. So nobody is useless and nobody is handicapped. A man who appears handicapped is handicapped because he has not mastered how to maximize moments. Because in God's faithfulness, he programs our lives such that everybody has a witness that God is faithful. But the problem is that not many discern it and not many maximize it. So the purpose of this conference is to teach you how to access moments of the Spirit and also to help you maximize the things that you have lost. Because one thing God will do here tonight is that some of the things that you have lost, there is a system of restoration that will be activated to bring it back to your life. That, that's what mercy will do for us in this, in this meeting. A restorative system, program will be designed to bring you back into what you lost 10 years ago. Because when you, are when you are dealing with Kairos moment, since it's not a routine, it is not linear. Kronos time is linear. You can't recover it. If you move, you have left it. But Kairos moments are opportune moments. God has a system of restoration where he can bring it back. That's why I said the years that the canker worm has eaten. He's not talking about linear years. He's talking about opportunities that are trapped. Because there are some of you here that your opportunity to become a leader at a national level came in 2019, but you didn't seize it. And because you didn't seize it, you have labored for five years. You have not become a leader. So what God will do is that he will open that window again in 2024. <laughs> that, that's the beauty of Kairos moment. But we will get there. Hallelujah. So that's the difference between Kairos moment and Kronos moment. Kronos timing is a linear time. It defines your routine. It defines your activities. But your destiny is not tied into those activities necessarily. 
It is the moments of the spirit called Kairos times that carries the weight of your destiny. Imagine if Mary missed Gabriel. Her virginity would have been good, but it wouldn't have had impact on salvation. Because that time that the angel came was a Kairos moment. It was designed from eternity past that that is when she will carry the power to bear a child. But you see, it was tied into an opportunity. And that was what made all the difference. This is the power and the excellency of moments. And this is why every believer must master how to win moments. Now, before I go into the protocol for winning moments that God allocates to a man, let me show you a few things that are calibrated into moments in order to give you an idea of the importance of moments and why you must contend for it. Number one, miracles and supernatural occurrences are tied into moments. John chapter 2, the Bible tells us a story that happened at a wedding in Canaan. If you read from verse 1 to verse 11, you will see the story. Jesus attended that wedding and suddenly the Bible told us that the wine was finished. And the mother of Jesus came to him knowing that this is a miraculous being. This is a, a child of wonder. He has the capacity to create supernatural possibilities. And he told the child that their wine is finished. Jesus didn't complain about power. There was one thing Jesus raised. He said, woman, what do I have to do with you? My time is not yet come. Because Jesus was trying to educate us that miraculous happenings are tied to moments. If you know how to access moments, you can delve into miracles. And if you master it, every day of your life can become an endless flow of the miraculous. Because in every day, there are moments that are articulated into those days to bring you a blessing. My time is not yet come. The problem many people have is that they've not known their timing. And if you miss your time, there are consequences. In Luke 19 verse 44, Jesus looked at the city and he lamented over that city. Not because there is no government. Not because there are no good people. He said, this city, there will be gnashing of teeth. That means men will cry and wail. Why? He said, because you do not know the time of your visitation. So one of the most dangerous things that happens to a man is for him not to discern the time of his visitation. He will struggle like an elephant, but he will eat like an ant. Because after laboring, when the blessing comes, he will not be able to pick it. Jesus said, my time is not yet come. That means miracles are tied to moments. If you understand how to work miracles, all you do is that you are waiting for the moment. We who are preachers here, sometimes we come into a meeting and as we are teaching, we are waiting. As we are teaching, we are waiting. Sometimes in a second, there's a movement. The moment you pick that thing, you become a giant. Because you will ride on that wind back to life. Not because you came in as a special person, but because you have the power to read the moments of the Spirit. That is what Jesus here. Anybody who wants to walk in the realm of miracles must master how to win times, how to recover times, and how to possess times. In John chapter 5, from verse 2, the Bible told another story. He said there was by the sheep market a pool called the pool of Bethesda. And he said there, impotent folks, broken men, sick and battered men, lay down and down and trouble the water problem he has. So your problem is not what you are looking at. Cancer is not the problem. Poverty is not the problem. The problem is you don't know when the water is dead. Made whole. Now, team and walked away. Out. And that's why what I will teach you later is mercy, the protocol of mercy. Because most of you, in addition to time, you need mercy. And to show you how undiscerning this man was, Jesus did, yes, Lord. The man went to story. I've been here for 38 years. He said, when the water is dead, nobody. So even that moment, he was about to miss it. That's why those who murmur never maximize time. If you want to win time, you must learn to take murmuring from you. You must learn to forget all these talkers, malice, malice, gossip, backbiting. They are some of the things that have kept most of us where we are. Will thou be made whole? Yes, Lord. He said, there's nobody to help me when the water is dead. He was angry that nobody was helping him. If people have not finished helping themselves, will they help you? And he was there for 38 years because he didn't know. But everybody who entered received the miracle. So the first thing that times, moments make available 
is possibility for signs and wonders. Miracles. Everybody here can receive miracles. But the thing is that, do you know your timing? If you know your timing, the money can come. If you know your timing, the healing can come. If you know your timing, the connection can come. But many don't know their timing. The first thing that moments make available are miracles. No. Second thing that moments make available is fulfillment of There are many prophecies hanging on your life. I'm a pastor. I've seen many people come to me before. They said every meeting they go to, a prophet must call them out and prophesy. But they've not seen it. The reason they've not seen it is because they don't know the intelligence of time. Prophecies are, magi are fulfilled according to the time schedule that the Lord has apportioned to them. Galatians chapter 4, verse 4 to verse 5. The Bible said, when the fullness of time was come, it said, God sent his son. So, Jesus was prophesied, but he will not manifest until the time window that was allocated from eternity. The same applies to you. There has been a prophecy on your life that you'll be governor. There has been a prophecy on your life that you will feed many poor people. There has been a prophecy on your life that you will travel the nation. If you miss the timing, that prophecy will be dormant. Because it's moments that animate prophecies. Even God had to respect the protocol of prophecy. When he met Abraham's wife in Genesis 18, he said, in the fullness of time, he said, I will return and your wife, Sarah, will be with child. He didn't just show up and said, I am God, give birth. It doesn't work like that. Prophecy follows a protocol of time. This is why everybody must understand how time works. It's good to receive prophecy, but there is a labor you must put in to know the season for the maximizing of that prophecy. That's why some of you are here. There are certain seasons that it looks like your prophecy is about to come and you need strength to ascend. And so the Holy Ghost came ahead of time and told you fast, fast, fast. But you will not fast until that window will pass. And then you are wondering, I've received this prophecy for 14 years. Is it that the prophet is fake or why is it not coming to pass? The prophet is not fake. The prophecy is not wrong. You don't know how to enter your window. I'm showing you, no Christian should be weak. Our weakness and our defeat is a function of our ignorance. Many of us here are carrying more than 50 prophecies on our head. Even the people we are celebrating have less prophecy than us. The problem is that we have not fulfilled one because we don't know how to seize the opportunity. We don't know how to win the moments of the spirit. And that's why those prophecies have not been maximized. Prophecies are articulated into moments. Number three, why are moments so important? Deliverances are tied to moments. Devils know this. But Christians don't. Joseph was in prison for over 14 years languishing there. In fact, two years before the time that God allocated, he built a connection with the butler, printed his dream. When you go back, please talk to the king about me. But if your time has not come, they won't remember you. That's why connection in the flesh is useless if the Holy Ghost is not involved. There are many people who compromise to build carnal relationships. There are many people who do terrible things. At the end of the day, they are deceived. They are forgotten and they are neglected because they don't respect the protocol in the spirit. I've dealt with many youths. There are many sisters who sleep with lecturers in the university to pass. Destiny is not just about passing exam. It's good to pass exam. But ma, when you go into the street, you will need favor. You will need wisdom. You will need divine timing. All of that, a lecturer can't give it. So it's a waste to give up yourself in order to get a score. Study hard. Any score you get, receive it with integrity and go away. Your life is bigger than paper. <laughs> Psalm 105 verse 17. He sent a man before them. Even Joseph. The Bible said he was sent. What a way to send a man. He was a, he was a houseboy. He was accused. He was put in prison. Is that how God sends men? Yes. What you call a, a life of pain and sorrow was a divine errand. But the guy knew. 
He knew that although things are not working now, but all things will eventually work for my good. For all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. And so while he was in prison, he was waiting for his time. So when Potiphar's wife came, sleep with me, he said, no. Although my destiny is not to be a houseboy, it looks as if God has forgiven, forgotten me, but I will not do this evil. A time is coming when my status will change. If I compromise now, I have betrayed my destiny. So it was because of that time that he endured. Did you not read about Jesus? The Bible said for the joy that was set before him, he endured the pain. People who don't know how spiritual things are administered, they are the ones who compromise. I will not sleep with you. If he did, he would have become the head of house boys. And he would have been there for a lifetime. A prime minister would have been the head of house boys. But he refused. And the Bible said, Psalm 105 verse 18, until the time that his word came. He said the word of the Lord tried him. They end for to lose him. Even the ruler of the people. He made him lord of his house. And ruler of his substance. To bind his princes at his pleasure. And to teach his senators wisdom. Imagine. Potiphar was not even a senator. The guy was going to a level in life. Where senators will become his students and disciples. What if he compromised? He knew that there was a time. He knew that there was a season. Where everything that part deliverance will happen. Hear me, women of God. It doesn't matter if you are in a straight head. Keep your ground. Your time is in the spirit. When that moment, the Bible said, he lifted up the beggar from the tongue and he causes him to stand among princes that they may inherit throne. You will not end where you are. You are on a journey. Wait for your time. Your enemies may laugh at you. They may turn to you. They may make mockery of you. I thought you said you are beautiful. How come you don't have a child? Wait. Your womb is being prepared. Think about Elizabeth. She was not giving birth until she was old. But that womb needed to be incubated with prayer. Because the one that was coming was a voice crying in the wilderness. It's not a child. So it's not about the number of children. It's about the weight of destiny that they carried. And when the guy showed up, they said, who are you? He said, I'm the voice of the one crying in the wilderness. Pray the Lord. He took an intercessor to raise that child. So it was not marital delay. It was not delay in giving birth. It was incubation process for a prophet. A prophet that could bring forth the Messiah. Do you know the testimony of Jesus concerning John? He said, of all men that lived, he said, there was none greater than John. That was the child Elizabeth carried. What if she didn't wait for her time? There is nothing you are going through that you cannot be delivered from. But it takes a timing. There is a time allocation in the spirit. And I don't know about you, but me, I will wait for my time. I'm not looking for anybody outside God to help me. I'm not looking for any mechanical means to go ahead. The race is not to the swift. Neither is the battle to the strong. It's of the Lord that showeth mercy. I'm not moved by what men say. When I look to the east, I know that my Redeemer liveth. It may not appear as if it is working, but I know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. Don't bother about those mocking you. That's not where your destiny is going to. Did you read about Hannah? The Bible said Penina made a mess of her. Every time they went to Shiloh, Shiloh was supposed to be the high place of worship. But it was in the place of worship that she was mocked. So that she couldn't access her God. That this thing is a distraction. And she went before God. She left every distraction aside. And she was laboring in prayer. And God remembered Hannah. God remembered Hannah. When your time come, God will remember you. I prophesy over someone. This is your season of remembrance. Oh. Yeah. anything discourage you see the spirit realm is a pregnant realm it carries many things destinies are carried there miracles are carried there no matter what is happening on ground focus 
If you know how to win the moments in the spirit, you will conquer on ground. A prisoner can become a prime minister. A barren woman can become the mother of the greatest man that ever lived. That is the supernatural interplay and possibility of the spirit realm. You are not defeated. You are not useless. There is a time for everything under the sun. There is a time. Find that time. Maximize that time. And see the color that your destiny will issue out. Now, what wicked men partnering with demons. Temptation said, to frustrate a man on his course, he said, the Lord approved not. Because there are too many wicked men who will only be happy if you go down. There are too many wicked people who will go out of their way. Their destiny will be to see you frustrated. Days are evil. The dark places of the earth, the Bible said, is filled with the habitation. This was Jesus talking. He said, Therefore, be ye also ready. For in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. This is how spiritual time happen. This is how moments happen. Moments happen when you don't expect. And so Jesus is teaching us here that the way to position yourself in order to win every moment is to live ready. If you are not prepared, you can't win time. Only those who live ready win every time that comes to them. Ask those who are making impact, they'll tell you. Some people, is why they are having their bath that something opens in the spirit, not in the church service, but the antenna is always sharp. And they pick that thing, run with it, and dominate nation. And you think it's by going to take a course for seven years in Harvard. That is beautiful. But opportune times are worn differently. Your spirit must be prepared. See, this is what you don't fast when you have problem. That's for the weak. When you fast only the, in the time of problem, it means your life is a reaction, not an action. We don't fast to solve problems. We fast to stop problems. For those of us who live fasting, problems don't come. We live praying. We live studying because we are preparing our spirit. We don't know the hour. But people who don't prepare, it's only when things happen, they start running to catch up. That's why they are always behind. Those who are prepared, they are ahead. Because while it is yet happening, they are already maximizing it. This is the first key for winning time. First Peter 1 Peter 1.13. It is replete in scripture. Study it, you will see it. They don't prepare. He said, give up your loins. He said, be sober. Hold the end for the grace that should be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus. Give up your loins. Hope to the end. Be ready. Be steadfast. At any hour, you are ready. Did you read the story of the foolish virgins? Matthew 25, verse 1 to 18. They took things for granted. They didn't come ready with oil. And what happened? The bridegroom didn't show up until at midnight. When did they discover they had no oil? Few minutes to midnight. And they thought preparation is cheap. They went to their colleagues, give me oil. They said, no, this oil they don't give. They... There are oils that are not given, they are bought. And that buying is the pain of preparation. You will spend hours in prayer to prepare your spirit. You will spend days, weeks, months of fasting to prepare your spirit. He said, if you faint in the day of trouble because your strength is little, they don't buy, they don't, they don't gift that oil, they buy it. And they said, go to them that have and buy. We can't give you. The moment they stepped out, the bridegroom came. That's how moments happen. This is why many never fulfill destiny. Because the oil will always finish few minutes to the moment of the spirit. Few minutes, that's when it finishes. And they, when they left, the bridegroom came and the door is locked. See, let me tell you, there are certain opportunities that is designed to happen to you once. There are some designed to happen to you five times. There are some designed to happen to you ten times. I'm not the one who designed it. That's why you can't. You can't. When they came, they knocked, opened the door. They said, no, these doors, they don't open it. When it's locked, it's locked. And what? Keep crying. Prepare. You take it for granted. The Holy Ghost himself comes every day troubling you. 
there are certain seasons of your life because of the urgency of preparation you wake up with a fear that you are not ready but some people still kill and abort don't become slave from preparing for destiny has already buried you for destiny i was people are carrying their grave in their hands from morning to night they are watching movie uploading pictures liking meanwhile these are deborahs A Deborah is a kingdom. Go and meet some ladies in society. Church. They say, Lord, we have mercy. Oh, God, we help us. And people are wasting away, not preparing for the great destiny. Not a gift. It is worked. Every one of us is entitled to it by the mercy of God, but we must walk our way into it. This is why preparing, because they did not know the times of their visitation. By taking action, some people prepare but it will never manifest again. Take action. See, those who win opportunities and rule this world are people who are given to proactivity. Never find yourself dormant. And this is a major problem. And especially in Africa, some of us is from our upbringing. In the bid to discipline children, we kill their confidence. And he follows them for a lifetime. Your boy is two years old. You have knocked him more than 300 times. For even things that are not serious. You have called him a baboon. You have called him a donkey. Every devilish name you have called him. Now he has lost his confidence. And when he comes to a place where he needs to stand up. There is something holding him back. There is a fear that you have introduced into him. So it's not just affecting those who are here. Some of us, we have translated that liability to our children because of the way we raise them. I'm not saying discipline is wrong. He said, if you don't take the rod, the child will be spoiled. Why? Because foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. He says, the rod of correction that drives it out. I'm an advocate of discipline. But when a child has to be disciplined, he must be told why he's being disciplined. There must be a justification so that you will know that this action is not because you have a weakness of anger. This action is because you love him and you are straightening his path. People who don't take action never maximize moments. Proverbs 20, 24 verse 33. A little sleep. A little slumber. A little folding of the hand. He a poverty shall come like an armed man. John chapter 9 verse 4, Jesus said, I must walk the walk of him that sent me while it is day. So what he's telling us is that the day is an opportunity. If I don't take action during the opportunity, I may never have the opportunity to take the action again. I must walk. This is Jesus speaking. That is God in human form talking that he too takes action in order to maximize moments. How can you ever hope to maximize moments when you don't take action? I must walk the walk of him that sent me while it is day. A, the night cometh where no man walk. The second way to maximize moments is to become proactive. The third way to maximize moments is to build discernment. The ability to recognize moments in the first place. If you don't have discernment, you can't know the action to take. First Chronicles 12, 22, and the sons of Isaacar. He said, these are men that understood, I think that's 32, times and seasons, and knew what Israel ought to do. And of the children of Isaacar, he said, which were men that had understanding of times and seasons, and knew what Israel ought to do. He said, the heads of them were 200, and all their brethren were at their commandment. They knew what to do because they discerned time. People who don't know the moments that they are in will not know the actions to take. Look at the life of Jesus. John 13 verse 1. Jesus knew that his time on earth was over. So he started wrapping up. He said, now, before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart from this world unto his father, he knew my stay here is over. You know why some people live carelessly? They don't know the time that they are in. So they assume that it's business as usual. 
it's not business as usual. The reason you think it's business as usual is because you can't distinguish between times. There are times when if you sleep, it's a sin. As far as your destiny is concerned. There are times when if you don't seek help, it's a sin. As far as your destiny is concerned. There are times when if you don't go out to walk, it's a sin. When you find somebody who lies down all through the day, all through the week, there is a lack of discernment. The moment discernment is born, the urgency to walk is activated. So those who are walking are walking because discernment regulates the passion to serve. I'm telling you why many are not making impact and it looks as if God is biased. God is not biased. The Bible said he's not a respecter of man. He doesn't favor one above the other. All of us are eating based on the degree that we align with spiritual protocols. That is Jesus, the Son of God. Same thing in John 12, 23. He said, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. He knew when he was to be glorified. He knew when he was supposed to leave this world. As you are seated now, what have you discerned? Which season are you in now? That's why you can afford to copy what somebody else is copying. Meanwhile, the danger is that the person is not in the same season as you. So he is doing something that is dictated by his season. You are doing something that is completely at variance with the season you are in. You will be in trouble. Discernment is key. Discernment is key. There is an ability to discern time. I already told you from John chapter 5, a man was, was helpless for 38 years just because he couldn't discern when the water is dead. As simple as that thing is, he was crippled for 38 years. Is it possible that the last 40 years of your life has been a struggle just because you have not discerned? Is it possible that the last 20 years of your life has been a frustration just because you have not discerned? Is it possible? Some people, something as sensitive as marriage, they cannot marry by discernment. They are looking at mundane things. Where the person walks, the car he drove, is your life that cheap? What if he's driving a Lamborghini and he has two years to live on it? Will you marry the car? See, they, we, we, this is the problem that many have. And these are major things. Listen, if you want to win every opportune moment that God has allocated for your destiny, you must seek, understand how to build discernment. And one of the ways to build discernment is to meditate on the word of God. Sit down, talk the word to yourself. The word will reconfigure how you think. So you begin to think in accordance to the mind of God. Meditate on the word of God. That's the simplest way to build discernment. But there are many who walk just based on luck, chance, and the suggestions of people. The fourth way to maximize moments is by sustaining the right heart posture. If your heart posture is wrong, even if you enter, God will push you out. Some people have discernment. They take the right action. They are prepared, but their heart is wrong. So they enter the moment. It is God that rejects them because of their evil heart. So if you want to win moments, your heart must be wrong. Because one of the things God edits in order to allow a man maximize moments is whether his heart is qualified to be numbered into that moment. Look at 1 Samuel chapter 16. Samuel showed up and he saw Eliab. If you read from verse 5 to verse 7, the guy had stature. He looked royal. And Samuel said, surely this is the Lord's anointed. He took oil to anoint him. And God said, no, I have refused him. I have not rejected him. There's a difference between rejection and refusal. That means he can be, but his heart is not ready. And God said, why? He said, men, look at the outward. I, the Lord, I look at the heart. So if your heart is wrong, you cannot win moments. 
if your heart is wrong, you cannot maximize spiritual moments. The heart is the basis. Jeremiah 17 verse 10, he said, I the Lord, I search the heart, I test the reins to give unto every man as his way should be. Why did you think Hannah could not give birth for a long time? It's not because she was barren. Her heart was wrong. She wanted to give birth to show Penina that she too can give birth. And God said, to a child you are giving birth to, he's a prophet. He came to fulfill divine agenda. If it's a child you want to give birth and wear uh, blue sneakers and blue uh, shirt and white short knicker to prove to the other person, <laughs> you will destroy his destiny. Until your heart is corrected, no child can be born. Until she came to God and said, Father, if you give this child to me, I will give him back to you. Now you can raise the prophet. The next year, she came back with a child. Most of you have not entered certain seasons because your heart is wrong. Your neighbor has taunted you until you think the goal of wealth is to prove to them that you too can be wealthy. You are joking. If God gives you that kind of wealth, you will use it to show off. Kingdom will not be advanced. And so, one thing that God will insist on must be right before a man possesses or wins moments of the spirit is that the heart must be right. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6 and 7, he said, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God so that in due season, the same scripture is in James 4, 7, he will exhort you. That means even if you are exhorted, God will be the one to elbow you because of the heart. So Proverbs 4.23 says, guide your heart with all diligence. He says, out of it are the issues of life. You cannot enter seasons except as your heart is right. And this, this particular issue is more severe for women because you people process more than men. You are like incubators. That's why you are the ones who have womb. We don't have womb. You can keep something inside you for nine months and it can germinate and grow into a full-blown full human being. So you have potential to incubate. So you must be careful what you incubate. Don't allow malice enter there. You will, you will germinate that malice until it can raise an army of bitterness and you will kill somebody you will not know. And you don't know is that unforgiveness, is that bitterness that will stop you from achieving the great destiny that God has given to you. You must check this heart well if you will win seasons. These things I'm teaching you is beyond coming to say, I decree over you that this week you will prosper. If your heart is not wrong, the prophecy will sit on your head for 30 years and it will not manifest. I was teaching my people on Tuesday. I said, one of the prayers we must pray is, Lord, help my heart. Lord, help my heart. Psalm 139 verse 24, search my heart, O God. Try my reins. Help me. Help me. Help me. There is something here. There's an incubator here. Help me to purge it. Help me to purge it. Because if your heart is not helped, ah, you will lose a lot of things. Look at Judas. He was supposed to be one of the 12 disciples. Jesus said, you will sit with me on 12 thrones in eternity to judge the 12 tribes of Israel. Which honor meets that level of honor? That you will sit with Jesus, but the heart was wrong. The Bible says Satan entered his heart. And when Jesus saw it, he knew that it's over. If a man's heart is wrong, even God can't help him. Jesus said, that which you must do, do quickly. Now, ask yourself, when Satan was at attacked Peter, the Bible said in Luke twenty-two thirty-one. 31, Jesus said, Simon, Simon, Satan desires to have you, to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith faileth not. When you are recovered, strengthen your brethren. Why didn't he pray for Judas? Because Satan entered his heart. If the heart is compromised, you cannot be restored. It takes divine mercy. If a man's heart is compromised and is restored, that's the highest revelation of mercy. Look at the book of Acts chapter 5. And then I have showed up. And Peter looked at him and said, why have you let Satan enter your heart? He fell down and died. Go and read your Bible. Everybody whose heart was compromised was rejected. He looked at Saul. He said, when you were small in your own heart, did I not make you king? Heart was compromised. He was rejected. So as I studied my Bible, I discovered that when a man's heart is wrong, God can't work with him. 
no matter the promise that was available. This is why the issue of the heart is too important. If you want this conference to profit you, if it will mean anything to you, you must fight to empty your heart on the altar. Don't live here with any garbage in your heart. If your heart is wrong, you are finished. And I tell you, one of the places the devil fights the most is in the heart. And it is worse in this generation. In the generation of mama, if you meet your friend and they talk, that's when you'll be hot. Now you don't need to meet your friend. You can sit on Instagram and meet 30 friends. And they project things that will pain you. And if you are not careful, you'll be weeping in your bedroom alone. That's the, that is the irony of this particular generation. A man can be excited alone in his room. And a man can commit suicide in his room. Not talking to anybody, but looking around the world. And people are good at projecting fake life. The, the, the lady gave birth and she's doing what she doesn't have to do. Just so that, that her enemy will see her. She puts her child on the bicycle. She's, she went to the garden. She's throwing the child. All of that. She's not doing it because she lost the child. It's because she wants you to know that she has given birth and you are still barren. Let it pain you. And every day you come and look and then bitterness is growing. Deliver yourself from that evil because it will rob you of many things. A woman and a husband who quarreled, they are going out, they do uniform, they hold themselves. And you see the woman overly tapping the husband, is fake. They are not talking to themselves at home. But she just wants her friends to know that her husband is a honey. She will buy a gift for herself and put online. See what my husband just got me. It's a lie. It's a three-month salary. Meanwhile, you and your bedroom, you cannot sleep. Because of that fakeness, you better rid yourself of those bodies. You don't need it. See, as I am like this, anybody succeeding, thank God for you. I'm on my own lane. I'm on my own lane. A man who is doing marathon cannot compete with somebody running 100 meters. Your, ra your race is for 10 seconds. My own race is for 10 hours. So if you like sprint, I am juggling. It's when I have run for 9 hours that my own journey begins. So I'm not moved with what God is doing with you. I thank God that he's doing it with you. That means it is possible. But for me to be troubled, God forbid. Our destinies are unique. The Bible said you are ingrained in the palm of his hand. The Bible said, even the hair of your head is numbered. So it doesn't matter who is prospering. Women of God, your time will come. Don't let anything trouble your heart. You will lose your destiny. I was telling my people, in this generation, focus is very important. Focus. It will help you to guard your heart. In 1 Kings 20 verse 40, a parable was told to the king by the prophet. He said, my Lord gave me a servant to keep. He said, as I was busy here and there, I lost him. That's how many lost their seasons. That's how many lost their, their moments. They are looking here and there. God gave you a grace for intercession. You are supposed to hide for five years. But the person you started with is now a global evangelist. And you abandon what God gave you. You too started a ministry online. You have lost your destiny. You have lost your destiny. God told you to study and become a leader. He wants to give you a place in the government. And suddenly you saw another lady who started business and she's doing well. And instead of building capacity for leadership, you abandoned it. You want to chase money. You have lost your destiny. One of the major problems we have on earth is dislocation. Many are dislocated from their destiny. And that is why they can't maximize moments. The moment that a government official has is different from the moment that an athlete has. So if you are not on your lane, you can't meet your moments. This is why you must guard your heart. Stay focused so that you can access everything God has put in your path. Finally, how do you access moments? Is by dogged and aggressive pursuit for those moments. Anybody you see who is maximizing moment is an aggressive pursuer of moments. Nobody who is casual about moments can achieve anything. Matthew eleven twelve. 
He said, the kingdom of God suffered violent until the time of John. He said, the kingdom of God suffered violence. And he said, the violent take it by force. If you are not aggressive, you can never seize or win moments. In Luke 8, 43 to, to 52, we saw the story of the woman with the issue of blood. The Bible said she had spent all that she had on doctors. She was not better. And suddenly they told her that one Jesus who lays hands on the dead and they come back to life, who lays hands on the blind at the sea, who raises cripples, was passing by. She asked again, wait, you mean that is possible? They said, yes. He did it in Capernaum. He did it in Zabulon. He did it in Jerusalem. Are you serious? And he's passing here? <laughs> Let me tell you, in her time, if you have issue of blood, you can't come among people. You can be killed. Because they consider it to be defilement. But the woman was too aggressive to have regard for protocol. When she heard that Jesus was passing, the Bible said she came in the press. That's a sick person. Imagine somebody who has been hospitalized for 12 years. Rises up from bed and she enters a crowd. And she's pushing and pushing until she grabbed Jesus. Immediately he stopped. Do you know what it means when Jesus stops? That's the revival stopping. Because if Jesus is moving, that's the move of God. The woman stopped the revival because she was aggressive. And Jesus said, who touched me? Peter looked at him. Master, you are an intelligent person. Which question are you asking? Everybody is touching you. They are not only touching you, they are pressing on you. He said, this one is a different touch. There are those who touch in order to be close. There are those who touch to snap pictures so that their friends will see. There are those who touch so that they can be called relevant and leader. This one is touching for an affliction to end. It's an aggressive person. Who touched me? And she turned and the woman was there. And the woman told her her ordeal. And he said, daughter, your faith has made you whole. Jesus was not aware that she was there. That means God does not need to know that you came. You can make your presence known. Jesus was not aware that she was coming. Jesus was not aware that she needed healing. But there is enough for everybody who is aggressive enough. Because the virtue is flowing. And she made her way and touched the master. That is not all. There's another man called Bartimaeus. The man was so named after his infirmity. You know that level of reproach? You had a problem, the whole city now begins to call you the barren woman. The whole city begins to call you the unmarried woman. The whole city began to call you the leprous woman. The whole city. And the guy's spirit was not broken. One day she heard that Jesus was coming to Jericho. He said, which Jesus are you talking about? They say, it's the one that raised the dead. It's the one that healed the blind. It's the one that opened deaf ear. Is it that same Jesus? They said, yes. He was blind, so he didn't know when he's coming or when he was going. He now took his time, went and sat at the gate and began to shout. From when Jesus came until he was leaving, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Thou son of David, have mercy. Nobody answered him. He was there shouting. Only God knows how long Jesus was in Jericho. He didn't stop. That's aggression. That's desperation. Thou son of David, have mercy. He won't stop. Jesus passed, entered. He kept screaming until Jesus was coming out. Some people now showed up. Are you not tired of shouting? Keep quiet. The Bible said when they shut him up, he will turn the other side. He started shouting, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. They said, keep quiet. Do you see the people following him? Tax collectors, Pharisees, governors are all looking for him. You, this dirty blind man who has not even been able to take his bath. Who told you he has your time? The guy turned to another side. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. He closed his ear to everybody. When you are desperate, you don't care what your neighbor is saying. When you are desperate, you don't care what your friends is saying. When you are desperate, you don't care what your family is saying. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Until a point came, the Bible said, and Jesus stopped. Ah, I love men that can stop Jesus. See, it is good to pursue after Jesus, but there is another realm. There is a realm where you are not just pursuing. You can stop the master. And the master stopped and turned and said, bring him. Guess what? The people who told him to shut up, 
were now the people that told him, hurry, hurry, he's calling you. Psychophancy of men. That's why you don't need to stop when they were mocking you. Those who were mocking you, they will be forced to celebrate with you. Those who were mocking you, they will be forced to celebrate you. I prophesy, this is your hour of intervention. And he showed up and Jesus looked at him. Guess what? He gave him a blank check. When you are desperate, you have the right to anything you want. What will you want me to do for you? He said that I might see again. Jesus, is that all? He said that is all, Master. That is all, Master. That I might see again. Mark 10, 46 to 52. And Jesus said, receive your eyesight back. He collected his eyesight and he began to dance. That is when those who are mocking you are going to see something. Because you are not dancing to taunt them. But your dancing will become a message to the whole city. The Bible said when the Lord turned again, the captivity of Zion. We were like them that dream dreams. Then was our mouth filled with laughter. And he said, the hidden will say, they are God have done something good for them. I prophesy over someone before you live here the season that will bring glory to your life you step into it in the name of Jesus what you are going through is your desperation enough to swallow it it's your desperation did you read about Hannah Hannah the Bible said when she was praying her mouth was shaking like a drunken woman and even the, the priest couldn't discern they say you daughter of Belia why did you reduce yourself to be used of alcohol she said no this is not alcohol I am only responding to the burdens of my heart I'm responding. Hope you know that Eli stopped hearing God. But because of the weight of our desperation, even a man that had no relationship with God spoke and God answered. I don't know what you are going through. But see, everyone who is desperate, this is your time. I speak over you. Every challenge you are going through goes down now. Isaac told this one. He said, when you become tired, you will break the yoke off your shoulder. See, if you are not desperate, there are things you cannot see. Some of us who used to watch football, the best of a footballer does not manifest at the beginning of the match. When the, the match usually is played for 90 minutes, by the time you approach 75 minutes, where is 15 minutes to go and a team is losing? That's when footballers become volatile. Because at that point, it's no longer about skill, it's about desperation. If you don't score that one goal, you are about to leave the tournament. And you see footballers begin to do wonders that they have never done before. See, somebody has reached his 99th level. Everything you are going through will go down now. God respects rocket faith. When a man's faith becomes rocket, he can arrest the attention of heaven. How many of you have read Matthew 15 from verse 21 to 28 the story of the Canaanite woman and is it not so amazing that most of these people were women the woman heard that Jesus came to the coast of Tyre and Sidon and she was not a Jew and she showed up and said master my daughter is thoroughly vexed with demons come and heal him Jesus didn't answer Imagine you are praying and God is silent. Some of you will stop and, be, and say, I'm now an atheist. God does not answer prayer. You are joking. There are certain things that God will allow you to see the level you can go to. And Jesus didn't answer. 
until the disciples became frustrated and said, Lord, if you will not attend to her, drive her away. And Jesus told them, I am not sent to everybody now. Until I resurrect, my assignment is only to the Jews. And she is not a Jew. And you know what Jesus said? It is not good to give the children's bread to dogs. So it is bad enough that God didn't answer you. Imagine that God used an idiomatic expression that qualifies you as a dog. Yet the woman didn't go back. She said, even the dogs have the right to eat from the crumbs that fall from the table. Immediately, Jesus stopped and turned to her. Woman, I didn't reject you. I actually came for Israel because Israel is the only people that have faith. Now you have demonstrated faith, so you too are an Israelite. He said, go, thy daughter is made whole. So even when God says no, and that no is not his will, but that no is conditional, a desperate man will meet that condition and that no will become yes. I don't know what you are going through, but if you are desperate for the next two minutes, I want somebody to cry. This is my window. I must take it. This is my hour. I must take it. This is why I told you, you don't just win moments, you seize them. The world is Catalambano. A people who cry, a people who roar, a people who insist can always receive the best of God. Can you cry for the next two minutes? I'm tired of this pain. I'm tired of this affliction. I'm tired of this stagnation. I'm tired of this poverty. I'm tired of this prayerlessness. I'm tired of this frustration. This is my time. This is how you take moments. He said, as soon as Zion traveled, she brought forth her children. There are certain moments that are conquered in the place of insistence by prayer. Can you insist now? Marakataya. Lele, lele, lele. Maronia, Pakata. Oh, Adonai. Hiya ho, hiya ho. Oh, secret place. Hiya ho, hiya ho. 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 Oh, Adonai. Hiya ho. Secret place, I am home, I am home, Hear me. When you start working with God, you will discover that there are two kinds of no with God. There is a no of God that is no because it's not His will. You can't change it, no matter how you pray. Jesus prayed in Gethsemane. He said, if it is thy will, let this cup pass me by. That was not the will of God. So no prayer could change it. But there is also a no of God that is conditional. That means it is no until you show faith. It is no until you show desperation. It is no until you show joy. It is no until you forgive. It is no until... See, that is the no that you become desperate about to change. And trust me, most of our crises are within the realm of the conditional no, but we have not met certain requirements. I want to give you two minutes. Two minutes of travail for that thing that requires God's intervention to change, for somebody to cry. He said, as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. So conditional no's are dependent on your response. Can we pray for two minutes? Katapora tafina. Zagapatila Paragata. Ah! Oh, Adonai. Hiya ho, hiya ho. Oh, secret place. Hiya ho, hiya ho. Hiya ho, hiya ho. Hiya ho, hiya ho. Hiya ho, hiya ho. Oh, Adonai. Hiya ho, hiya ho. Oh, secret place. Hiya ho. Can we pray like people who will not take no for an answer? Reke Faruda Tabakata, Rakapatonda Paragatia, Latelila Mantabo Rabakate, 
Zakapatina Parakatosh, Zetetina, Vanta Pato Parete, Zekatina Karakata, Mando Bracatia, Sanzaka, Bracatale, Shabatido, Braca Totalina, Mantarago, Racaboa, Shire. Some of you, your only son that you trusted God for in prayer that he gave you is about to bring disgrace. How can your son travel to Canada and all of a sudden he say I'm a woman? How can the son that you trusted God for suddenly turns 18 and he becomes a smoker? He becomes a thief. This is where things are changed. This is where we seize moments in the spirit and we say no to the agenda of the devil. A generation desperate. How can God promise you that is your season to get married and every suitor that comes says they must sleep with you or they will not marry you? How can God promise you that you will give birth to kings and now you have been married for 10 years? There is no child. It's time to travel. Things can be born. Seasons can be born. Moments can be born. Times can be born. Kairos seasons can be created from the altar. As soon as Zion travelled, she brought forth her children, Manta, Berado, Baragata, Zagabata, Sezevina, Mariado, Bariata, Mandereka, Baduna, Savaka, Shakatalita, Marodia, Paparada, Regedegadina, Salabante, Ando, Sapa, Ah, Warwa, Tetetetela, Yakabateke, Baradino, Fellowship International, travel in the spirit. Show your aggression, the rockedness of your faith. Mande Pera Baruta. your hands toward heaven. There is much God we do later tonight. But please lift your hands wherever you are standing. The Holy Ghost is telling me now that everybody that has been stagnated, the devil has tied you to a spot. There is a power available now to break those cords. See, Christianity is not a, a religion. What we are doing here is not fanatism. It is a spiritual force that has the power to impact on existential realities. This is not a charade. I had four sisters, four. 36, 34, 32, not married. That was when I knew this thing is not about title or preaching. It takes power. It said, when I came unto you, I did not come with excellency of speech, declaring unto you the counsel of God. I came in the demonstration of the spirit and power that your faith will not be built on the wisdom of men. The wisdom of men is about theorizing. When we talk about spiritual things, it's something that can create change in the physical. This is why we trust God, because it can be proven. We are not, we are, this is not a, a religious charade. Destinies can be altered. My wife just gave birth 12 days ago. Eight months, doctor showed up 
amniotic fluid is too much. Sugar level is gone up. What do you mean by that? I cancel it. One week later, oh, premature, what, what, whatever. Premature labor, I said, what do you mean? It was written that the child will be in the womb for nine months. That child is not coming out until the time is accomplished. And everything went to normal. We are not talkers. He said, we have not believed cunningly devised fables when we spoke to you about the coming king. These are things that can be proven. Holy men of God spake as they were moved by the power of the Spirit. Lift your hands toward heaven. Chains are about to break here. Some of you is marital stagnation. Some of you is delaying childbearing. Some of you is frustration around your finances. Some of you is frustration around relationship. Father, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Father, <laughs> you can be quiet now. Stop praying. Just lift your hands. This is the moment of the spirit. Yokes are about to be lifted. Because you are choked, I don't want it to be aggressive. Because the fire of God will fall on some of you literally here now. Father, wherever they are standing, everyone here stagnated by powers beyond them. Powers of darkness. Manipulating circumstances. Manipulating men to stagnate them. In the name of Jesus, I stand as a custodian of the oracles of God. I decree over you now, let the chains break. There's an anointing that moves men. He said the hand of God was upon Elijah and he outran the chariots of Ahab unto Jezreel. Ushers, wherever they are standing, that oil is coming upon them. Help me now. Help me now. Bring them here. I want to lay hands on some of them. In the name of Jesus, carry that oil now. Carry that oil now. Carry that oil. Mara Bakatone. Vera Barota. Bakatanita. Help them ushers. Carry that oil. I release the grace for speed. Move into your destiny. Help them on the galleries. It's getting aggressive. Manta. Barakato. Sabatina. Oh, yeah. My belly shall flow rivers, rivers of living waters. Here, here, here. Out of my belly shall flow rivers, rivers of living waters. Here, here, here. Belly shall flow. Out of my belly shall flow river. Bring them here we from the gallery the on the floor. First, second gallery. Carry that fire now. Let it flow, let it flow. Let it flow, let it flow. Let it flow, let it flow. So let it flow right here, right now. Let it flow. Let it flow, let it flow. Let it flow, let it flow. Let it flow, let it flow. So let it flow right here, right now. Let it flow, let it flow. Let it flow, let it flow. Let it flow, let it flow. So let it flow right here, right now. 
when the river flows, he begins to bring every dead thing to life. It's a life-giving river, so let it flow right here, right now. When the river flows, he begins to bring every dead thing to life. It's a life-giving river, so let it flow right here, right now. When the river flows, he begins to bring every dead thing to life. It's a life-giving river, so let it flow right here, right now. Let it flow, 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 so let it flow right here, right now. Let it flow, let it flow, let it flow. your hand toward heaven there is a grace for fruitfulness that the Lord wants to release now some of you may be in the area of biological children but for some of you it's for entrepreneurship your hands will produce things many things there are seven of you here that an anointing will come on you like a whirlwind and shift you to a new dimension Father, on the floor, on the first, second gallery, and any overflow available, I decree now, let that wind rest upon them. Let that wind pass through them. Let it pass through them. Carry the grace for fruitfulness. Help them, ushers. aggressive thank you father thank you father thank you father please help them I come in the volume of the books it was written about me to do your will O oh God Please help that lady on the top floor. Let her not be injured. Come in the volume of the books. It was written about me. To do your will, O oh God. I come in the volumes. Come in the volume of the books. It was written about me. To do your will. I come in the volume, in the volume of the books, it was written about me to do your will. I will do your will, I will do your will to do your will, O God. I will. Before we return for the next service, spend time to pray.